I'm not gonna lie, I'm super excited about this video for a couple of reasons. This is what a thousand people look like lining up to go down a field. They changed the location on us this year, but man, it was crazy. Secondly, I'm not the one riding in this video. It's this guy, my son James, for a reason we're about to cover, because this individual broke his wrist on Friday, uh, just went down into a pile of rocks, and that's all we really need to know. This here is the start line for the second way. My son is 15, so he was riding in the 15 and under. The race is essentially the same, but instead of doing two laps, you just do one. At first pass, you might think that that's a lesser than race, but I think by the end of this video, after seeing the footage, you'll agree that it is not. It is a tough race for anybody to get through. This field was slightly smaller than the 100 mile class, but it's still roughly 600 riders by my estimate. Uh, we haven't gotten the official tally yet, but that should be pretty close. I do these uh, videos chronologically, so unfortunately we have to get right into something. With 1,600 riders launching into the field, you pretty much immediately run into log jams at the first obstacle. Now the camera was off for a few seconds uh, for the first couple miles, but he turned it on right at the bottom of this, so you get to see the first log jam that happens. Now what happens next, uh, for anybody that saw last year's video, it's going to be a little reminiscent of that, and we'll discuss that in a second. But going up these rock climbs, you're walking next to your bike and you're kind of pushing and pulling the clutch at the same time and sometimes that bike gets away from you a little bit. And sometimes it lands on somebody and uh, that's super unfortunate, but it's really not a family thing. It just happens. Now, you can hear James apologize in the background and there is more footage that I've cut out from here. James does turn around three or four times and ask the guy whether he's okay. And he seems to shake it off and seriously, good on you, whoever you are. That was, uh, that was looked painful. Uh, I can't get around that. So here we are escaping from the scene of the crime, trying to get out of here as quickly as possible. Now we'll get back to some framework around the details of this video. James here is 15 years old, just about to turn 16. He has been riding since he is 5, so if you're looking at this and thinking to yourself, why would you let your kids do this, it's because it's awesome, and uh, he's been doing it a long time. Now I'm sure the sharp ones among you are thinking to yourself, isn't it dangerous? I mean, seriously, you just had a picture of yourself with a broken wrist after going down on a pile of rocks, and no joke, James is about 10 feet behind me. That would be correct, yes. People get hurt. People get hurt walking the street. People get hurt uh, dirt bike rallies. Uh, we get to choose whether we trade it for a story or whether it just happens, so here we are. Now, admittedly, this race, this area, probably a little bit more dangerous than normal, though we do ride in the Rockies a fair amount now, and that also has a lot of rocks, and quite honestly, it's just a lot more fun when it's challenging. Now this event here is the Desert 100, put on annually by the Stump Jumpers in Washington State. As far as I know, it's actually the largest starting line in the world for a, a motorcycle race. When you think about it, between the two waves, we're roughly 1,600 bikes now, and that is a ton of bikes. It's something that uh, can really only be understood in person. This running is the 51st annual running, although it used to be in a different location. I think for the last 20 to 30 years, it's been held in Odessa, Washington. Now one of the highlights every year is honestly just getting into the scenery here. I love the desert as a whole. Uh, traveled a fair amount and get to see a lot of deserts. And this one's uh, unique in a lot of ways, um, particularly because of its location in Washington. Nobody would really think of that as a desert area. But I love the tombstone style mountains here. It reminds me of Arizona a lot. Um, it's just between the sagebrush, the, a little bit the wind, although that can get a little irritating over time, the rocks, um, just all the fauna. It's just a beautiful place to race in. Now this event is pretty spectacular as a whole. Uh, by Friday night there's uh, somewhere between 10 and 15,000 people all camping in just a farmer's field. All sorts of uh, vendors and food trucks and RVs and stuff laying around. Uh, this, on Saturday there's a poker run which I believe has in the neighborhood of 6,000 bikes involved. It's also something to be seen. Although really the, the, the race here is the marquee event, the, the thing that we all really come here to watch. Now with those details out of the way, we can uh, get into a little bit of race commentary here. The train we're riding in, or that the course is in, is quite varied. It's got uh, a little bit of everything except for maybe mountains. A lot of sand, a lot of silt, uh, some marshlands, rocky climbs, uh, embedded rock, rollers six, up to about six inches, um, silt. Um, now the only thing that remains consistent through all of this is the rocks. There is a ton of embedded rocks and there is a ton of up to about 6 inch rolling rocks everywhere. Uh, it's hard to see in the video, although quite honestly this year is one of the first years where I feel that the camera and the position that we had the camera actually reasonably represents what it feels like to be there. Now any event of this size obviously has a ton of volunteers. The uh, lineup of very trusting uh, pumpkins here on the side 
Um, they lined up at, I believe, four or five different checkpoints throughout the race. You had to get a mark or a stamp from each one, and at the end of the race, they checked to see whether you had them all, uh, obviously to check whether you had actually hit all of the checkpoints. But uh, we have to send a huge thank out to everybody from Stump Jumpers. They put on such a good event for something that's so big and literally in the middle of a field. Every year it's just amazing that with that many people that it still functions and that it's a relatively family safe event. With all that being said, I don't get the distinct pleasure of uh, commenting on my son's race. Um, it's interesting to see him race. Uh, I, um, I ride in front of him sometimes or I behind him sometimes, but it's not often I get to see him in uh, his full send mode. And quite honestly, super impressed with his riding this weekend. Um, some of the training that we've given him over the years is coming through. Some of it's stuff that he's taught himself. Um, it's really hard to be too critical of what he's doing. Uh, his body position's been great. You look through look through the race here, you'll see a lot of habits that he's developed over the years. He, we've been riding in sand since he was five years old, and clearly it matters. Um, he makes up a lot of time uh, through the sand, some in the rocks. Um, that's more of a recent addition for us, but... He knows full well how to ride in the sand. He knows that no matter what the problem is, the answer is always more throttle. And you'll see that throughout the video a couple of times. You see his bike get right sideways, but he always knows to give it more gas. Back end always snaps back into place. One of the most important habits that you develop while you're riding is to, to shake a little bit of the flinch. Um, you'll see through the video that uh, at times it seems like it would get really hairy, that it, it'd be really bothersome. Uh, to most people. Uh, if you want to know a little bit about his state of mind, just watch for how many times after he's gone sideways that the first thing he thinks of is to wipe the lens off of the camera. Clearly it's not bothering him very much. He's got a good head on his shoulders and clearly his brain is keeping up with the speed of the bike. Now riding at speed can be a little counterintuitive at times. Um, you really do have to develop kind of a more aggressive attitude to do this. Uh, Any time that you're thinking about what you're doing or you're grasping on because you're tight or you're pinching or trying to get off the throttle that's when you're going to eat it hard that's when you make your mistakes so you really do have to to kind of commit to everything that you're doing and to a great degree i think that's easier for a 15 year old than it is for people in their 40s 50s and 60s or maybe a little more realistic about the consequences of uh, gassing on instead of braking but uh, it also saves them a lot so i don't know if this is a wisdom over experience thing sometimes just uh kind of just pure adrenaline runs the show Another one of the takeaways from all of this is uh, just being able to see James as a racecraft. Now, um, I have honestly been really impressed with his line selection. He clearly knows how to navigate well. Um, choosing lines for the desert is very important. Uh, you can't always just go down the center. That's where all the roughest terrain is. So you see him si shoot out to the sides on these little goat trails here and there. Um, takes a certain level of boldness. You cannot see very well in them. The sagebrush covers the ground and you really take a bit of a risk, but uh, he seems to have better luck than not in it. Another one of the neat things to notice uh, as I see the race through his eyes is honestly a bit of a split personality when it comes to him. Clearly he's got some aggression in him. Uh, he, he gets really close to some people. He's able to do passes while still being steady chooses his moments and is quite aggressive when he needs to get around people but at the same time he frequently stops either apologizes to people asks if they're okay um, I cut them out of the video just because I was trying to get the uh, the time of the video down I I ended up with way more footage than I normally do um, but it, it's great to see that he, he's got a conscience in there while still having a very competitive spirit um, it's an excellent balance to have that being said, most of my experience is either enduros or desert racing. And quite honestly, the level of sportsmanship has been excellent, um, if not uh, consistently great. I uh, very rarely run across people that are, are difficult, pushy, or overly aggressive. I mean, obviously you have to be a certain level of aggressive, but the, the riders certainly take care of each other and look out for each other, and that's great to see. And you can see examples of it through the video. And um, this sport would be a lot harder and a lot more dangerous if it wasn't for the camaraderie. We all know what we're getting into. Uh, we all know what we signed up for. And I think that as a result, we, we all look out to e for each other a little bit. Now, a prime example of that would have been on Friday when I broke my wrist. I uh, went down and I was down for four or five minutes while I was collecting myself. But in the first couple of minutes, there were several people that stopped by to make sure I was all right and offered all kinds of help and accommodation to go get the med truck to help me ride back. They offered me pretty much anything I would have needed, and on the course back, it the riders just kept coming. Um, they obviously had to be paying attention to, to what I looked like, but instead of just being out there blasting around, living in their own world, they very much look out for you, and that's very much appreciated and a pretty good sign of a good community. Watching this video, there's been some odd similarities to my own riding style that I've noted. Um, 
for years, for whatever reason, I get faster as the race goes. I always finish getting faster and faster, and it really doesn't make any sense. But James clearly got faster through the race. I don't know if it was a comfort level. I mean, he'd done a fair amount of riding through the weekend. I think they did probably both probably close to 40 miles on the Saturday plus whatever he rode on Friday after uh, he dropped his dad off but he definitely definitely got smooth uh, got fast and uh, it's a bit of a funny thing to share now watching through the video you also notice uh, just how fast he's riding quite honestly it's at times it's easy to look fast because of the video the way you position the camera you set everything up but uh, you notice that the speed that he closes on people. Now, he did start in the second wave, so that means he was picking off a lot of the slower riders from the the first wave. But uh, by about an hour, hour and a half into the race, he was past all the slow ones. And he's still closing on these guys incredibly fast. And if you look at the, the caliber of riders that he's going by, these guys are not new riders. Uh, you really got to give full props to him. He really did show up well in this class. I'm looking forward to see where he finished. But if I had to take a guess, I'd say he'd be in the top third. Um, it was hard to tell the... The people apart up on the podium but uh, it does seem like he'd be in the upper third now when your kids start riding you have the realization that eventually they're going to be faster than you last year i really had the first taste of that there's certainly sections now through the woods uh, where he is faster than me you typically in open terrain i'm still a little bit faster but quite honestly uh, after watching the footage this year i'm not sure i could have gone much faster uh faster at all that's uh, certainly a bit of a humbling moment but also a very proud moment uh, he certainly done extraordinarily well this year i look forward to next year he'll be in the 100 mile class and it'll be probably the first time that we'll ever get to race head to head on similar bikes uh in the same class at the same time so it'll be it'll be really fun uh looking forward to it uh not sure what my expectation is anymore uh just commenting on the video here it's super funny that he got sprayed a little bit going by that by guy but uh, seriously probably hosed him with a couple of tons worth of dirt there on the way by the this last little bit of the video it's a little bit slower but i wanted to show you the size of the event um you can see there on the left is the start of the pit row and for the next uh, i think roughly 60 seconds of the video here is people lined up for the pit um it really is impossible to imagine the size of this event uh, obviously i don't do a whole ton of motocross so i i can't tell the size of the event there but i do know that they don't do 1600 riders in a motocross event and certainly not lined up like this uh it's crazy to watch and uh i didn't really want to speed this part of the video up i just wanted to slowly sit back and enjoy um do stick around for the last little bit there's some commentary at the end we see james with his helmet off and see just how excited he is so please stick around for that uh it's well worth the wait now to the group that we were riding with this year there were nine of us out of what used to be the saskatoon area obviously myself and james reporting out of st albert in alberta now but out of the nine, if you include myself, who I guess technically I didn't race on um, Sunday, but four out of the nine of us didn't finish. That's pretty on par for the course. Uh, typically every year, roughly 50% of the people don't finish. So really big congratulations to James. It's a huge first accomplishment to get through this. It's a hard event and um, really proud of him for getting through and particularly for going so fast. Uh, he really left it all out there and looking forward to racing him next year. Now, before you click end on the video, please make sure to stick around for the post-race commentary from James. Uh, it's, it's worth a listen, so uh, should be starting up here in a second. Just wanted to make sure that we got the transition uh, over the stand or over the podium at the end. With the last-minute addition to the video, I just saw the unofficial results. James finished 18 out of 68 finishers in his class, and given that uh, both 50% fail, you can estimate that uh, he's 18th out of 136 so he absolutely killed it why is it so hard for people to say leppington it's leppington levington leapington i just don't understand it it's leppington james leppington Good. Can't wait to do that twice next year. <laughs> nice. So proud of you, bud. That's awesome.
Yeah, that was fun. All right, let's roll her back. We'll oh, talk I'm so about it. <laughs> I'm gonna feel that. Last name, Alexander. What is it? Yeah, it's off now. Just ran out of battery. But yeah. Let's see that face. Face that of good. victory. <laughs> I got sprayed in the face several times. <laughs> <laughs>